why is the PS5 so big? This thing is a hog. I can barely fit it next to my TV. Obligatory looks like a network router joke. The middle of the console is glossy. Can't wait for fingerprints. While you can place the PS5 horizontally with the stand, there's no way I'd want to do that. It looks so fragile, and plugging in accessories causes it to shift all around. Like all modern consoles, there's not enough storage. In fact, there's only 667 gigabytes, which, hey, that might sound like a lot, but we all know how much data just one PS5 game takes up. In order to install more storage, you have to take the shell off and unscrew this bolt to add an M.2 drive. These things alone are expensive, and it needs to have a heatsink as well. There's only three USB-A ports and one USB-C. That's not a lot. External drives can only be used for saving games and not actually playing them. Hey, hold on a second. What now? Because the PS5 is mind-blowing. I got one too. Say what you want about the design. It stands out as one of the most unique looking consoles of all time. The DualSense controller is legendary. Even aesthetically, it looks really cool. All the buttons feel amazing to press. The button shells have a clear coat revealing the icons underneath them. It's got a very futuristic style. And the joysticks are great. There's an outer lip to help prevent your thumbs from slipping. The most impressive aspect is the adaptive triggers. For certain games, you'll feel actual resistance and tension when pushing down. It's pretty wild technology. And haptic feedback adds vibrations when running around in games, adding an extra layer of immersiveness. And if you want to play games and chat with friends, there's a microphone built right into the controller. The textures for all the PS5 accessories use the iconic PlayStation buttons, and I mean all of them. The console itself, controller, PS5 camera, Pulse 3D headset, wireless chargers, you name it. Okay, that's fine and all, but let's get into the actual games. Outside of Astro's Playroom, very few games have utilized the PS5's control features. Oh, and speaking of games, I got a question for you. Where are they? There's very few PS5 exclusives, one of them being Demon Souls, which, okay, but that's a remake of a PS3 game. But oh yes, there's Deathloop and Death Stranding Director's Cut, but uh, these are timed exclusives, so alright. But wait, there's also Sackboy and Horizon Forbidden West, but oh, they're on PS4. But hey, hey, wait a second, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, that's a new one, and so is Returnal. So, you know, summing all that up, that's uh, really Really, not a lot of games after, you know, almost two years. And let's not forget that PlayStation is in the process of merging together PlayStation Plus and Now with this new tier system. PS Plus Essential and Extra seem fine enough, offering things like discounts, monthly downloadable games, and stuff like that. But then there's the premium option. Apparently, a catalog of 340 games from the PS1, PS2, and PSP is coming, but it's 18 bucks a month. That is pretty steep just to play retro games that probably won't work if you download them and unsubscribe later on. Dude, you are being way too harsh. While there may not be a lot of PS5 games yet, thousands of PS4 games are backwards compatible. And you can still use the PlayStation VR with the PS5 on top of your old PS4 controller. Some PS4 games can be enhanced with Game Boost on the PS5. Blast processing is back. Games load at a blistering pace on PS5, and they look even more incredible with ray tracing, HDR, and 120 FPS for some games. The menus have been completely revamped as well. It's easier than ever to jump into a game or swap to watching a show on Netflix or YouTube. I mean, I guess I can agree with you on some of those factors, but I haven't even brought up the accessories. The media remote has no grips on the bottom, making it very easy to slip across the table or wobble around. Even if I had a disc PS5, there's no eject button on the remote. I like the Pulse 3D headset, but why is there a USB dongle? It should have been integrated into the PS5 itself. While this headset claims to be noise cancelling, it really only dampens outside noises. The surround sound doesn't work when it's wired up, so you can't get the full experience if you plug this into your controller. The PS5 HD camera only supports 1080p, and the quality is awful. That's a little jarring when the console itself focuses so much on 4K and 8K resolutions. And honestly, it's basically only used for broadcasting gameplay, but you might as well get a nicer camera and use OBS if you're going to bother with streaming. If you have the digital PS5 like I do, you can't use physical discs. This will go over well with preserving these games several years from now. Oh my god, you don't know what you're talking about. Sony's Pulse 3D headset is incredibly comfortable to wear. From the stretchable headpiece to the poofy earbuds, you can easily wear this for hours. For 100 bucks, the sound quality is pretty darn decent. Sony developed its own type of surround sound called Tempest 3D, and it captures background noises in a way that feels like reality. 
The media remote is completely unnecessary to own, but man does it look slick. The buttons feel great to push, and it's even got a dedicated panel for streaming apps. The PS5 HD camera is stylized to mesh perfectly with the PS5's general look. And it's extremely easy to hook up. Just plug it into the console and plop it on top of your TV to get started. Well, some of that stuff is fine, but good luck getting a PS5. It's still nearly impossible to get one without paying a scalper's price. Finally, something we can agree on. Anyway, yeah, sorry, I'm gonna get going. I've got bigger issues to worry about. See ya.